Good evening, my name is Anna Jabłońska and welcome to Poland Daily. As spring is in full bloom, the autumn's municipal elections are approaching. Today the ruling Law and Justice Party has unveiled their candidates for the offices of mayor in all major Polish cities. Finally, we have seen the end of Jaki Dworczyk debate in Warsaw. The die has been cast. We now know who will be representing the Law and Justice Party in the autumn municipal elections for the position of mayor in Poland's major cities. For months it was speculated that Patryk Jaki will be the party's candidate for the post in Warsaw. Today this information has been confirmed. Warsaw, Patryk Jaki. Patryk Jaki born in 1985. In 2006, he joined the Law and Justice Party. In 2012, he co-created United Poland Party. In November of 2015, he was given the position of Deputy Minister of Justice. Jaki was the idea man behind the establishment of the Verification Commission on Warsaw Reprivatization. He became the president of the commission on the 11th of May 2017. By the decision of the political committee of the Law and Justice Party, Małgorzata Wasserman, member of parliament and president of the Am the Gold Scandal Committee became the party's candidate for the Krakow office. Krakow, Małgorzata Wasserman. Małgorzata Wasserman is a lawyer. In the 2015 elections, she was elected into the parliament, getting 81,000 votes. Since the autumn of 2016, she is leading the parliamentary investigative committee on the Amber Gold Ponzi scheme. The current president of Gdańsk, Paweł Adamowicz, the disgraced civic platform politician, will face the ruling party's candidate, Mr. Kacper Płażyński. The law and justice candidate for the Gdańsk post is just 29 years old. He is a lawyer and the son of the late Maciej Płażyński former same marshal who died in the Smolensk disaster. Kacper Płożyński did not want to speak with the media. I will invite you all to the press briefing and give a broader comment on the subject. Meanwhile, I must excuse myself as my fiancé is getting away. I am really sorry. Poznań will see an independent candidate from the Law and Justice Party, Tadeusz Zysk. Poznań awaits a change. Poznań has and has always had big ambitions. The city is a cornerstone of Poland. That is where Poland had its beginning, had its baptism and first coronation. Everything stems from Poznań and Poland has always looked closely at it. In Wrocław, civic platform's Michał Ujazdowski will face off against a woman who wants to share her plan for the city with its residents. Naturally, I will gladly share my ideas for the city with you. However, I would first like to announce them to the people of Wrocław. So if I may ask, please allow me to meet the residents of the city and speak with them first. For the time being, the Law and Justice Party does not have its representative in any of the 16 voivodeship cities. Almost a year ago, the president of Poland, Andrzej Duda, proposed that this year, on the 100th anniversary of regaining independence, Poles should take part in the constitutional referendum. Today, the president spoke at the conference devoted to this idea. However, the ruling law and justice party consistently shows very little enthusiasm for this concept. Andrzej Duda wants to discuss the questions that could be asked in the referendum. He put forward examples of some significant reforms, such as currency, health and social insurance, and proposed that the new constitution should introduce a mandatory national referendum at the end of the legislation process. The Court of Appeal has rejected the request by the parents of two-year-old Alfie Evans to allow him to leave the Alder Hay Hospital in Liverpool in order to receive treatment in Rome. His British doctors, together with the judiciary, have decided to end the boy's life support treatment against the will of his parents. Alfie Evans is suffering from brain damage, which has left him in a semi-vegetative state. The decision to not allow Alfie to receive treatment in the Baby Jesus Hospital in Rome has outraged people all over the world. His parents are doing their best to save their son, but all they hear is, kill him, kill him. I can't imagine what they must be feeling. Until now, they were probably convinced that they are living in a civilized country. Anthony Hayden, the judge of the Court of Appeal, could have, with one decision, allowed to attempt saving the boy's life. Instead, he decided that the boy should not be allowed the chance to fight for his life. On Monday, Alfie's doctors decided to take him off life support. They said that he would be gone within minutes. Ten hours later, he was still fighting. 
Osoba, która... I think it's baffling that the judge, a person who has written books about how wonderful it is that gay couples can raise kids suffering from diseases, is now taking away a wonderful little boy's right to live. Little Alfie is not alone in his fight. The boy and his parents have received support from all around the world. Yesterday, dozens of faithful people met at St. Peter's Square to pray for the boy. People in Warsaw are gathering in front of the British Embassy to show their solidarity by lighting candles and bringing teddy bears for Alfie. It's pure narcissism. People are willing to sacrifice everything, including the life of a small child, just because something doesn't fit with their ideology. The third biggest party in the Polish parliament, Kukiz 15, has written the British Prime Minister, Theresa May. They condemn the legislative murder on Alfie Evans. Yesterday, the civilized part of Western Europe held its breath while waiting for the final decision of the British court. The verdict was barbaric. Alfie is about to be legally murdered. We have written Theresa May and we hope that normality will soon return to Britain. Tonight at 10 p.m., Poles will gather yet again in front of the British Embassy in Warsaw to hold a prayer vigil for Alfie Evans. The Polish President Andrzej Duda and Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki visited the US-Poland Business Summit 2018 today. The event was organized by the American Chamber of Commerce in Poland, which is composed of over 300 companies representing a wide range of sectors and had, and had significant American presence, including 80 of the Fortune 500 companies. To say closing comments, closing remarks, not knowing what was before is a little bit risky, but I'll try any, anyhow. Uh, well, I thank you very much first for, for inviting me to this meeting. I see that year after year we have more and more investors, more and more entrepreneurs and, and business people from, from the U.S. and from Poland, and I'm very happy with this, I have to tell you. That's, that's my first uh, closing comment. Second would be uh, a couple of statements, a couple of sentences on, on the situation uh, in, in Poland, in particular economic and, and business related uh, environment and, situ and, and situation. Well, po Poland um, is uh, growing by the day, you may say, and uh, our economic development, our GDP growth is one of the strongest in Europe and actually if you take into account 10 uh, the biggest uh, economies in the in the EU, uh, our growth is the strongest. It's it's four and a half um, uh, percent and and growing uh, stronger and stronger uh, one quarter after another. And what is very important for me and and it's uh, I think a, a good uh, in, information for for business people for business community that this growth is very well balanced. That's all we have for tonight. Thank you for watching Poland Daily and please join us tomorrow at the same time. Good night.